Hi there, it's Jennifer, and welcome to my Flagstaff home. Um, this is the first in a series of two videos where I show you how to make pine needle baskets. Now, I live in Flagstaff, Arizona. It's right in the middle of one of the biggest ponderosa pine forests on the planet. And um, my backyard has, well, my front yard and my backyard have pine trees. My backyard backs up to forest. There's ton, it's all over. I mean, there are pine trees everywhere. And so this is a great place for us to get um, pine needles and do something useful and kind of fun with them. Um, a friend of my mom's made pine needle baskets for years and she was, she's actually like has shown her work in galleries and things like that. So, so she's very, very talented. I'm not as talented <laughs> as that. Um, but she also uh, offered a class at the Arboretum in our town to show how to make pine needle baskets. And, but this is, um, this is one of, of Claudia Martin is her name, and this is one of Claudia's baskets. And um, this is made of pine needles. Now I'm going to, well, first of all, let me point out that the, the yellow colored stuff in a pattern here, that's the raffia that's used in this. And it's a special kind of raffia, so stay tuned because I'm gonna tell you what you need for this. And she uses her raffia in a specific pattern, as you can see. And then if you look here, you see the, um, you'll see the raffia, the yellow raffia stripes, and then you see some tan, that's the pine needle. And then you'll see these dark brown stripes and that's the little end of the pine needle. You know how pine needles will have the little pieces that come out and there's that piece that holds them all together at the end, I don't even know what that's called. But anyway, that is what that is. Now some people when they make pine needle baskets will break those off. They just don't even wanna deal with them and you can do that, especially if you're, if you're doing one for the first time, you just don't want it to be too confusing and trying to think about patterns you're making with all these different um, components. You can, you can um, break those off, but she uses them to make patterns and this one she used them to make um, straight lines down and she also used them to make some patterns inside in the center. So here's another one and you can see the different patterns that she made with both the raffia and the ends of the pine needles. Real simple pattern around the outside. There's another smaller one here and then <laughs> This is my first one <laughs> right here. And um, I tried to make a little pattern in the center. My stitches are really messy around the outside if you take a look at that. Um, and they're kind of messy on the inside too. But I was trying to make circles with the little brown um, end of the pine needles. Let me tell you what you can use these things for. We actually use these two baskets that Claudia gave us as decorations. Of course, we could use this as a basket for rolls you would want to make sure if the rolls had grease on them, butter, anything like that, that you put a napkin in of some kind so that it doesn't stain and get the, um, the basket greasy. The one thing you don't want to use these for is um, as hot pads. You don't want to put anything hot on them because they will burn. So it's even though you think, oh, that would be really good for that. No, no, it wouldn't be good for that. And there's a sterilization process, which is what is going to be the focus of today's video, is how you sterilize them and get them prepared for making your baskets. So yeah, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to prepare your pine needles. And in the next video, I'm gonna actually show you how to get started. When you get your pine needles, you can just go out and gather a whole bunch of them. You just need to make sure that they are not those teeny ones. They have to be five to six inches long at a minimum. And um, years where, where areas experience drought will have shorter pine needles. And then if there happens to be a lot of water a particular year, the pine needles will be longer. So you wanna get a whole bunch of those. The other thing you need for this is a tapestry needle. So, you know, good size needle with a point end. You don't want a blunt end on the needle. You want a pointy end. And um, other than scissors, the only other thing you need is some raffia and I've got a little Ziploc bag filled with some. You don't want to get raffia that is untreated because it's too dry and it breaks. You want to get raffia that has kind of a waxy coating. 
So like if you just go to Michael's and grab a bag, it may be the kind that just breaks. You can tell that it's the right kind if it's a little bit shiny. And so like if you look at this, I'm yanking on it and it's not breaking. But other kinds of graphia that are not treated will just shred. And so when you're pulling it through a pine needle on the needle, um, it, it'll, it'll break every single time. And so that's frustrating. Um, so let's go ahead and I will show you um, kind of the process of that and then I'll come back and tell you a little bit more. So to begin preparing the pine needles, I just put them in a plastic, this is like a shoebox size little plastic bin. I put some pine needles in here with some dish soap and warm water and I'm just going to start kind of moving it around. This initial step is just to get all of the the main dirt and bird droppings or whatever else has gotten on the pine needles as they've been out in nature. So I'm just going to do this and the water looks kind of dirty as would be expected. So I'll probably rinse it another time and then um, and then we go to the next step which is sterilizing the needles by um, pouring hot water over them and I've got the microwave going right now heating some water. So I'm going to um, stop and um, agitate this around a little bit more, dump it, rinse it, probably rinse it again and then we'll go to the hot water. So, but the reason I'm using a container like this is um, that you don't, there, there will be some sap that will come out of some of these um, as they're in the really hot water and so you don't want to ruin a nice pan or pot or even your sink with that. Um, now here we are and I have poured the hot water over it. Um, I need to kind of try to push some of these things down. It's sort of hot to do that. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to let this soak in here as it gets a little bit easier for me to touch it. And then I'll move the needles around. And then the idea from here is to let it sit in this water for probably about 10 minutes. Rinse and then I'm going to um, just put it in a fresh batch of water and let it sit for about 30 minutes so that the needles will get soft. So now what I've done is I've taken a, a, the amount that I want to start working with, and this is just, if I put this, you know, just what I can hold in my fist. And, um, and I've wrapped it in wet paper towel and um, put it in a Ziploc bag. I'm doing that because I want these needles to remain pliable. They were just sitting in water for oh, 20 to 30 minutes and they've gotten pliable and I want them to stay pliable because if they dry out and I try to stick a needle through them, they'll break. So this is what I'm gonna use when I'm continuing to work on, um, on my little baskets, which I'll show you in the next video. Over here I have the rest of the pine needles just don't spread out a little bit on some newspaper and I am going to let these dry. The reason I'm going to do that is that um, I, don't need, I don't need a whole bunch at this point and I don't want them to be in this bag staying moist and then get molded or something like that. So I really just want the amount of needles that I'm going to need for say the next few days. So when these have dried out, I'm going to put them in this Ziploc bag, bag that I've marked clean so I know that these are needles that I've already washed and sterilized. And when I need more needles for my project, then um, I'll take some of these out of the bag and I'll soak them again. I don't have to do the boiling water thing, but I will soak them again for 20 or 30 minutes and then when they're ready I'll take another handful of those and put them into a bag like this again. And in the next video I'll show you how to get started in making the basket. But I hope that you will come along with me and try this because it really is a lot of fun. I thought it was going to be really difficult to do and it really wasn't that difficult to do. Of course, if you're going to be a person making museum quality baskets, that'll probably take a while. But if you just want to, you know, try your hand at doing some simple little things like this, you know, give it a try. So I hope you will join me next week when I show you how to do those. Anyway, you guys, I hope you're doing well and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.